Hey everybody, Dr. Fisher here. Today we are going to talk about what I do. What is my daily routine? We're going to get up close and personal to the point where, to some degree, this preparation for this video has definitely made me feel a little uncomfortable. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to try and be as open and uh, straightforward as I can. So we're going to talk about my typical schedule, uh, why I set my schedule up the way that I set it up, what are some things that I'm passionate about, if that's something of interest to you? And then kind of a little self-reflection for my own self, some of my own perceived strengths and weaknesses. And if you want to hang around to the end for some extra fun stuff, there is going to be some random question and answers from people who are curious. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into my day. So I've always been an early morning riser since post high school. I definitely wasn't an early morning riser in high school. And that's the story for another day. But right now, because our daughter decided she wanted to go to the gym with us in the mornings, we get up at 445, which is pretty early. We go to the gym uh, in the mornings in order to prep for going to the gym. I usually pop right out of bed. Uh, I usually pop open my Duolingo app as I'm putting my shoes on, uh, turn my car on, do my workout drink, maybe a supplement or two. And really just kind of, it's part of my routine. I just do it, I don't think. And I get started kind of from that perspective. I start drinking water at that point in time. We go to the gym, usually Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturday as well. And they know us to the point where we don't even have to say anything. We're like, hey, hey Zane, hey whoever's at the you know front desk that morning, somebody whoever's working overnight. And they start the one and four massage beds. So we start off with a little time to meditate, relax, kind of warm up from that perspective, and then we'll do a little workout. I usually drink a good chunk of my water at that point in time and get hydrated so my muscles are working and and there's a lot of movement that happens. Usually I, you know, walk on the stair stepper and then I kind of rotate through whatever I'm doing. I love big body movements. I love, you know, right now I'm focused on muscular building. So we work out to roughly six most every day, come back home, spend a little time with the kiddos. Our oldest are usually up first. My son, who's really athletic, loves to do a few extra push-ups with me. So I usually like to save a few of those uh, for when I get home. We'll usually start with a really hearty breakfast, a really solidifying breakfast. Uh, for me, it's going to be five or six eggs, steak, something like that that's that's going to keep my blood sugar stable. I push, push, push. And so for me, I need real good solid stability to be able to have the uh, the feeling and the knowledge that, you know, with what I'm going to eat, that's going to give me that stable place to really push hard from. And then at that point in time, send off the old the older kids get up the younger one, spend a little time with him, get him up and rocking and rolling. And we're kind of preparing ourselves for the day, connecting, spending time with each other. And then we go upstairs, get ourselves ready for the day and take a shower, you know, the typical stuff. I do pretty much every morning like to end on about two minutes of as cold of a shower as I can manage. I'm a huge fan of cold plunges, that sort of thing. So I try and get in at least two minutes of that every day. And we'll talk about the specifics as to why here in a minute. And, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's a pretty typical morning. Uh, then once I get up and get rocking and rolling, and um, I have eaten my breakfast, I also usually like to take some of my supplements, whether that's a little adrenal support for kind of that way I like to push myself, a good multi, a fish oil, probiotic, along with the good solid food that I like to eat in the morning. Typically, we're out the door by around 7.30ish, maybe 8 o'clock, and I start seeing patients usually around the 8.30 hour. I like to have a little bit of time to kind of come in, kind of set things up. I like to kind of transition myself from a mental space from where I am it's good to have kind of rituals that you go through. That's a really important part of my, what I've found to allow myself to be successful to kind of rotate through things. Now, a typical patient day is going to be, for me, I usually see somewhere between 10, 15 patients a day. Most of the time, more like 13 to 15. 
and they're half hour visits. I, I know a lot of patients are probably watching this. They, they see me just kind of churn through. I'm there, I'm with the patient and then boom, next patient, next patient, next patient. And so we're going to talk about some of the details with why and how I do that. But, you know, I love, as many of you know, I'm a pretty intense individual. So I love kind of keeping the intensity up. It allows me to kind of harness my energy and really put and focus on what I'm doing and work at a really, really high level. So in the office, you know, I'm working with patients, supporting them, dealing with their stuff, feeling their pain here and there signs and symptoms, really working towards health, whatever their goals are, you know, I really try and connect with those patients to really give them the focus and attention that's necessary for, for them to have some self-reflection as well as us to kind of conjure up and figure out a, a, a good solid plan for them that will provide them stability. And so I work on all kinds of different things, but a heavy emphasis on what I've been working with lately with patients, for example, and some of the stuff that I love with patients is I, I do a lot of emphasis on mental emotional work and a lot of you who are patients know that that's a passion of mine i love being able to have those deep profound changes i'm, I'm giving supplements all day long diet lifestyle advice that's really important too because those are foundational we have to have stability within the physical body to be able to to get deep to be able to do the work from a mental emotional standpoint so that's a typical work day uh, on a business day, I do have some of those, you know, I wear a lot of hats. So I'm a small business owner. I manage employees. I manage myself. We do the marketing, you know, all the other small business stuff, pay bills, the typical stuff of a small business owner. I, I have a few other things that I do as well, uh, serve in the community and whatnot. And so I tend to manage those on, on a business day. Um, so in a general sense, that's seeing patients. How about the middle of my day? So, so typically what I'll do for lunchtime, for example, uh, I, I try and keep myself going in the sense of, you know, I also try and provide myself with a good solid meal through lunch. So some proteins and some greens, whatever that looks like. Sometimes I'll prepare uh, foods in the morning. Uh, oftentimes I'm kind of on the run to some degree. Maybe that's not the best option, but I usually have therapy, uh, my own personal therapy once a week and or some sort of consultation there on my own stuff, working on my marriage relationship at least once a week, and then I'll do kind of an energetic exchange. Um, I've been doing that for multiple, multiple years at this point in time, and I get a lot out of those experiences. And so those are really important to me. They're really special and they, they really hold a special place in my heart. And for me, it provides some stability. Some, It's kind of like another variation of going to the gym, right? So I like to work out my physical body. I like to work out my mind. I like to continually kind of process and move forward with these things. Now, at the end of my day, I have three small children who are all very active. Uh, all of them like to do physical activities. So, of course, you know, like a typical busy dad, at the end of my work day, as soon as I'm done seeing patients, usually we at this point in time we're going to rush around i try and either rush home grab a quick bite to eat relatively healthy you know protein veggie maybe some rice something along those lines depending on whose night it is we kind of rotate through in our family and provide a little bit of that blood sugar stability piece now ideally i would have time to pause reset and really transition. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Ideally, that's what I would like to do. And so, and then we're usually busy. Uh, my, my two boys are in basketball, my daughter's in swimming, and so most nights of the week, we're busy until eight-ish, and or my oldest son's busy till nine. We'll go home, and we're usually trashed by then, right? We try and spend a little family time together, depending on where we're at with the week, because that's really important to me. Uh, building and supporting and sustaining those relationships. And usually we'll put the kids down around 8, 8.30. And then once the kids are in bed, you know, I like to either spend a few minutes or a short amount of time hanging out with my wife. Or for me, some of the things that I like to do at the end of the day or maybe watch a couple YouTube videos or play a game of Halo. Right now it's Halo Infinite. 
So those are some of the things that I love to do. That's kind of a typical standard work day. Now, Saturdays, we don't have a work day, obviously. Uh, and so usually that's kind of a catch up day. Sometimes we'll still have sporting activities on those days, but we usually do, you know, the typical standard parent stuff where we do shopping and cleaning and laundry and those sorts of things on a Saturday. And then Sunday really is a day special to us. We dedicate that to family and spiritual recovery and or recovery from the week. So, and then that usually allows us that downtime and that process time to really reset and start over in preparation for the next intense week, because that's just kind of how we do things. Now, summertime, slight variation there. Usually there's a lot of outside time. Obviously the sun is up much, much later. And so we'll usually kind of push our time just a little bit because we don't have to get up to put the kids into school. So we'll usually shift to like 5.30, right? Woohoo! Big, big shift. So a couple of things in relation to why I might schedule the way that I do. So for example, in the morning when I get up, I do pretty much the same things. I get up, uh, put my workout clothes on. I've usually set them out the night before. I will organize and, and, and remake my bed. I will, you know, do my app, do my workout drink, kind of the same thing every morning. And that allows for that organization and or I've already made that a program because I've been doing it for so many years now where I don't have to think, right? So on the hard days, when it's really hard to get up, I don't, I don't have to think. I just let the program run and I get up and I go through the motions to some degree. Sometimes that's all you got. Now, also the way in which we have it set up, I'll usually, once I'm finished with my Duolingo, learn a little Spanish, I will usually, you know, watch a YouTube video or do a little meditation or a little self-hypnosis, uh, either in the car or sitting or while I'm on the massage table. And, and that's a really important part of setting up my day for success. Now, I'm not always optimal in there because sometimes I'm half brain dead, right? But getting up and really setting the intention for the day, maybe having some positive affirmations, uh, a prayer, a meditation, something like that is a typical kind of mainstay that kind of gets me going, gets me kind of focused on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Spending time with family, again, because those are what's important to me. Now, a couple of other things too, right? Setting the intention for the day and really seeing it happen. That's a little Joe Dispenza work where holding the thought process, seeing it happen already, and then holding gratitude or a high level emotion allows me to draw myself to that successful thought process. And I really want to increase my likelihood that I'm going to be successful in the day and, and helping people and connecting with people and, and living my life the best that I can. So that's a really important reason why I have that part of the day set up like that. Now, also, again, why do I eat like massive amounts of steak and eggs, for example, for breakfast? Not only are they delicious and power house full of nutrition, but I need the stability. I, I, my body type, my metabolism, not only am I working for that muscular component, but I'm a, I'm a salt waster. And so I need a lot of good, solid protein to really keep me stable. And as you can tell, I really like to push. Right now, I'm, I'm at this stage in my life where I just push, 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 push. Still pausing and resetting, right? So for example, at lunchtime, every time, for example, after I, I'll do a session, uh, I usually make sure that I have enough time to come and lay down for a 10 or 15 minute meditation, prayer, reset, nap, whatever you want to call it. I do a variety of things depending on the day. But that reset is essential for me. Uh, I was just talking with Tim about it the, uh, yesterday or today where he notices a significant difference. He can see when after I've done those things how much energy they've drained out of me. And I know that I have to reset. So I will lay down and I'll do my little reset. Some of the patients who, who know me and who have been here after lunch know that we sit and I have my window down because I'm in here, I am asleep or I'm meditating or I'm doing my little reset. That's essential for me to be able to recenter because, you know, different things trigger me, my own stuff happens, I get a little off kilter. And so that recentering then allows me to then refocus and have my blood sugar stable and have my focus on the people that I love and care about, which are my patients and being able to really connect with them again. And so also a big part of the reason why I set things up the way that I do is 
my goal is to allow myself to empower myself with the choices I make. I, I do my best to really take accountability for where I am, what I'm doing, what's happening in my life, because life happens, crap happens, right? And so I'm trying to provide as much uh, increased chance of success as possible. And so I also love the idea of, for me, the mental headspace that I really focus on is not necessarily any one particular end point, but adjusting my focus where what my priorities are is to focus on my growth. Where was I at yesterday? Uh, what, what stuff did I suck at yesterday? How can I improve on those? How can I talk with my kids, my wife, my friends, my patients, my therapist, and be able to receive information from them that will help me be more self-reflective because there's plenty of things that I know that I, I can't see. And so that allows me to focus on improving my own life and, and increase, increasing the chances and the likelihood that I'm going to have enough energy for that. It's going to be my priority. I'm going to see it when it comes up. And, you know, it allows me to then be working at my highest caliber so I can make a difference with the people in my community whom I serve. So regular check-ins throughout the day is a really important part for me. Now, I do, for those of you who see me, I, I do a lot of energy work, mental emotional work. And oftentimes while I'm in the process of treating someone and interacting with someone, I am being triggered. And so I actually have a practice of recentering while I'm sitting. So oftentimes patients who are with me in the clinical setting will see that I close my eyes. I slow my breathing. Because I'm recognizing that my body has told me that I'm being triggered for whatever reason. Oh, that thing with my own daughter. You know, that came up yesterday. Uh, that was really close to home. Something with my own wife. Something with my own inadequacy. Something I'm projecting. Oh, was that something I projected on them? And so I have a process of recentering for myself so that I can really allow myself to connect with myself and with the patient. That's a really important piece. So checking in with yourself. Having some sort of process that allows me to be able to regularly check in with myself. Additionally, on top of that, uh, my phone will regularly ding. I've got a couple of different reminders in there. One of them is, how am I doing in my relationship with my wife? How is she doing, right? So that kind of gives me that little self-reflection. How am I doing? How am I doing with checking in with myself? And so I have that ringer set twice a day. And so that allows me to kind of continuously, again, be as efficient as I can as I'm checking in so that I can give this high level of intensity, high level of care, while still maintaining my energy. And I'm constantly working on refining that process. Now, uh, it's really important for me to continue to develop that ability to know where I am and know where my drains are and whatnot. Because from a health standpoint, if I don't, and I don't understand where my drains are coming from, then I'm gonna get sick. And I'd prefer to avoid that. I'm still human, though, so stuff still happens to me. Now, that's the general idea about my day and why I set up my day the way that I do so I can make sure that I'm in the mindset that allows me to receive information necessary for me to be as successful as I can, both with my patients, my kids, my wife, my friends, the people that I love and care about. So... If you have additional questions and or comments and, and or thoughts about something that you do in your day that provides you with that stability, the ability for you to be in the right headspace, please comment below. That would be really appreciated. So the next topic we're going to talk about is some of the things that I'm passionate about. Now, I'm a pretty intense person, if you haven't noticed that already. And so some of the things that I'm passionate about are going to be things like self-improvement, self-awareness. Right? Those are, for me, foundational pieces that really diving into it has allowed me to be in a place where I absolutely love what I do every day. It's freaking hard. Hard work. Relationships are hard work. Being a human being is hard work. So I want to be able to be in a place where I can adapt and adjust. And so that self-improvement idea, the self-awareness piece... Improving my communication, that is something I've been working on for years, been in therapy for years. I love it. I don't have any desire to stop because it continues to help me improve with the things that I need help in so that I can have better and deeper relationships with those I care and love about because 
I mean, for me, that's what life is worth living for. Uh, I also love to spend time outdoors and spend time with my family. So, for example, I miss it living here in Washington, but I love going home and doing some four-wheeling in the sand dunes. I love going fast from zero to 60 as hard as I can. Uh, one of my favorite activities that I've done recently was last year for my birthday. I rented a Tesla Model S Plaid that goes zero to 60 in two seconds. That was like one of the most crazy intense experiences of my life. I love that kind of stuff. I also love watching things like sci-fi shows, uh, anything with like energy work. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with that process. Now, one thing I did leave out in relation to kind of like my nightly routine and morning routine is that I'm pretty much constantly learning because I'm obsessed with it. I pretty much am either watching a YouTube, reading a book, doing a Udemy course, doing some sort of continuing education pretty much all the time. My wife and kids get kind of annoyed about it just because I'm pretty much always constantly learning something. And so they're all kind of, they all kind of give me the hand at this point in time. So I love the constant learning. Now, jumping back into the things that I'm, that I love and that I'm passionate about. Some of the other things that I have that are, that are big passions of mine are my trampoline. I've always had a trampoline, uh, since I was an adult, my kids get a jump on mine. I have a nice, fancy, fun trampoline that we love to jump on in the in the summertime, especially. Not as much in the winter time around here, but it is one of my favorites. Now, as I mentioned before, some of my favorite activities are just hanging out with my buddies, playing some Halo. That playing the Xbox, mostly Halo. Uh, that is one of my fun little kind of getaway things. I also enjoy going to Costco. As funny as it sounds doing a little window shopping, uh, and and looking at the electronics. Electronics have always been a thing for me. And then, last but not least, for some of my passions, that includes my sensory swing. I love them. I think everybody should have one. Uh, I have a sensory swing that's literally hung up in my living room. I love to get in it. In it. My kids know. My wife knows when I get in it. I usually snooze for a little bit. It's absolutely one of my passions is napping in my sensory swing. So, Next topic of excitement is going to be, you know, a, a short uh, perception for my own self of a few of my strengths and weaknesses. Now, you know, one of my strengths is my consistency. And I would say if, if there's a, a skill that you want to develop that will allow you to become the person you want to become, consistency has probably been one of, one of my greatest secrets, if you will, to being successful. I know that I'm not an unintelligent individual, but something I constantly am saying about myself to other people who've asked me, you know, how did I get here? And one of the things I like to say is I'm the guy who's going to put in the work. I'm going to, I'm going to study a topic two, three, four, five times, whatever it takes. I'm going to come back every day. If I didn't get it the day before, I'm going to come back the next day and the next day and the next day. And we're just going to keep on hitting it until I get it. And so now it's it's gotten over, over time, it's gotten easier as I've refined that process of consistency and trying to refine and understand how I learn, how I work through things. And so some parts of that have, have gotten easier over time. But again, consistency for me is one of my greatest strengths. Now, also, the ability to recognize, for the most part, especially when I'm working throughout the day, when I need a restart. Uh, I've worked really hard over the years at, at being able to check in with my body and recognize when I'm a little overloaded or overdone or a little extra tired. And I'm pretty good at being able to identify, okay, I need a 10, 15, 20 minute reset point. I've gotten pretty good at that at this point in time. Now, when I get home with my wife and kids, uh, you know, sometimes... That's a little more difficult, but but I'm pretty good at it throughout the day. So again, some of my things for me to continue to work on in my own self-reflection journey, some of my weaknesses are just like with any professional. Oftentimes when you know a lot of stuff, it becomes difficult in certain situations and you have to really have a lot of introspection and, and, and the ability to kind of self-check in to recognize when you don't become haughty or feel like you know a lot. The reality is, is one of the things that I am constantly working on is that humility piece, because I know that as soon as I lose my humility, 
right? Then I'm going to lose my ability to continue learning, lose my ability to continue to connect with other people. And so that is something that, you know, it, it frightens me oftentimes just because of when you get into a position where I'm at, where you are working with people at a really, really high level and the depths that we go when we work in those situations and the power differential, uh, you know, as a human being, it's a pretty intense process. And I love it. And uh, it also humbles me, too, in the appreciation of, of people letting me serve them in this way, of trusting me with such deep levels of parts of who they are and their experience. And so... Um, I don't know if I'd consider that a weakness per se, but that's one of the things that I worry about and I stress about the most is this ability to be able to stay humble and uh, to be able to continue to stay connected to other human beings and other people and receive information. So that's enough for the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, we're going to jump into the last little section. Thanks for those of you who have held in there. This is a long video, uh, very in-depth you're getting to know me very much, very close. I tried to be really honest in this video. We're going to talk about some random questions and answers from people who are curious, okay? So a couple of fun ones right off the bat. Uh, how many times a day do you fill up your water bottle? Now, this was a fun and interesting one because I fill it up actually probably two or three times. <clears throat> so I actually have a very big water bottle. I've had 64 ounce containers before this is a 40 ounce container i probably fill it up two three times a day usually by the time i hit the clinic though i have already drank about 80 to 90 ounces between my workout drinks and a little bit of drink drinking water while i'm at the gym usually i'll do 40 to 60 ounces at the gym so some some variation there my goal usually is about half my body weight in ounces i like to stay hydrated that's a really important piece for me i like the fact that I understand that if I stay hydrated, my muscles are going to be stronger. So, you know, that that's a pull. I'll, I'll be honest. That That's a little bit of the pride thing. So next question is, interesting kind of follow-up to that, how many water bottles do I own? Uh, so an interesting fun fact about me is I like to make sure that I keep my water bottles. So I have one that sits behind me here in the clinic. <clears throat> I actually have one that I'm going to be placing in my car for working out in the morning. I have one that sits on my counter at home, and my all of my family have water bottles as well. So right now I'm currently at about three water bottles. Uh, another interesting question is how much do I read? So if you listen to the answer before, I'm pretty much constantly reading. Right now, uh, my I, I would throw this into the weaknesses category, I guess. Uh, one of my weaknesses is feeling like I don't know enough. And if I don't know enough, then, you know, that's where some of my own insecurities come from. So I'm constantly trying to overcompensate. So right now, for example, I have about 50 audiobooks that I haven't listened to in my Audible. Uh, I probably have over 100 books that I've bought with the purpose of, of reading them. I have probably enough continuing education courses courses to last me the rest of my life and uh, be more than sufficient to fill all my continuing ed requirements. So pretty much I'm constantly learning, whether it be watching a YouTube or watching some videos about what I do and how I do it, how self-improvement components. At night, I usually study out of my manuals. That's what I do for fun. I know I'm kind of crazy. Again, I'm, I'm passionate slash what's the other word um obsessed depends on you know your perspective and however you want to call that so all the time i'm always reading always 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 taking in information it's one of my favorite things to do honestly um how do i use my own advice this was another interesting one so we have kind of already talked about a lot of different philosophies that I kind of employ in my own life. And I try and whenever I learn something new, I try and add that idea into kind of my processes. How, and I'm, I'm constantly kind of asking myself, how is this information in comparison to what I already know? How can I improve my patient's lives or my own life in relation to this particular topic? Is this something worth putting time and energy and effort into? 
Uh, one of the general questions that was also asked, how often do I check in? Uh, and I think I mentioned it before, but I'll, I'll quickly go over it again, is I'm constantly checking in, especially when I'm working with patients. My body is constantly telling me, especially as we're kind of working with stuff, I'm, I'm constantly asking in my own mind as I'm pausing, is that my stuff? Is that their stuff? Because I'm a human being and I'm still working on the idea of kind of clearing my own stuff out of the way as I'm working with someone. It's really easy as a human being to project my own stuff onto my patients, the people I work with. It's just a normal, natural human thing. And so I'm working on that process currently. So I, I'm regularly checking in uh, multiple times a day, uh, a little more formally first thing in the morning and a little more formally at lunch. And let's see, what's the last one? Oh, last question that I have here as we close things up. Uh, what do I do when I'm having a bad morning? And this will be one of the last questions. So, you know, life sucks sometimes. You get up, you know, things are rough. And they can have varying degrees of roughness. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I rely on <clears throat> when that extra chaos happens in my life is I rely on the processes and the systems that I already have in place. I know that if I'm not doing very well and I'm feeling very, very unstable, I personally have to stick with my routines a little bit more because that extra chaos is mitigated and or antidoted a little bit by, you know, my, my insecurities really rear their head at that point in time. And so I can provide some stability for myself by making sure I make my bed a little bit better in the morning, organizing my clothes a little bit more, making sure that I kind of stick with my routine a little bit more, going through that process, as well as really working on having a little more self-compassion for myself, recognizing I need a little more. I'll take more supplements. I'll change the foods that I'm eating. I'll cut down on sugar or, you know, goodies that I might be eating. And so I try and adjust based on the needs that I'm currently experiencing. And that has really allowed me to have the adaptability to work through some really, really hard stuff. You know, um, in this line of work, uh, because I connect with people of varying ages and kinds and, and where they're at in their life, sometimes I have people who I'm working with who will die. And I'm still working on the grieving aspect, but that's really hard. I don't know what job you do, but I know for my own self, that's really hard because I love the people that I work with. I absolutely love them. I I do whatever I can to help them within reason, of course, you know, working on my own boundary piece, but that really affects me. And so I have those days. And so, you know, working through these processes are really, really important. So, you know, I just want to reiterate something too. another thing that I do regularly again with this idea of, of all things that I do skills that I have that allow me to kind of smoothly or or peer smooth in dealing with kind of the ups and downs of life I do things really consistently I pray I meditate I focus on my deep breathing I practice my self uh, or my stress reduction techniques um I work on connecting with myself and others. Again, I mentioned this before, but practicing self-compassion. Kirsten, Kristen Neff, she's super fantastic. Brene Brown, they talk about the importance of these pieces, and I have found them to be essential in being able to keep myself from being stuck moving forward in my life. So, you know, in order for me to be able to be at the high level that I expect myself uh, to be able to function, as well as to be able to interact with other people and or, you know, they've come to expect me to function at that high level. These are the things that I do. These are the, the ways in which I live my life. Now, you know, I don't always do it in an ideal way and I don't know the end all be all. I don't espouse to know everything. One thing I do know is that I know very little uh, in the grand scheme of things. And I think that that's one of the most important pieces. Again, I mentioned it before for me is that I work on staying humble and uh, recognize that everybody can teach me. Even my six-year-old, he teaches me all the time. And so if you like the content today, please like and subscribe. Uh, we really appreciate those of you who care about this sort of information. And we want to give you more stuff that's helpful, uh, that makes a difference in your life. So please share that with us in the comments down below and look forward to another video uh, coming out soon, most likely, which will be a little shorter than this. This is Dr. Fisher signing out.